Hi and welcome back. Um, Today I'm going to be talking about the most important rule, um, in my opinion, the one and only rule in watercolour painting and one that you really need to know. And I'll be painting a seascape, uh, a very loose sort of semi-abstract seascape, um, just really creating an impression of of a breaking wave, rolling surf, blue sky and some seagulls. I'll be painting it mostly wet in wet so I've wet my board with my large Chinese Harky brush. Um, My board's at an angle of about 45 degrees so I'll get a really nice run of paint, soft diffusions and I'm prepared to tip tip and tilt my board around. Um, I'm using two colours and white gouache. Two colours will be Prussian blue and Payne's grey. Now back to that rule, Um, for me the most important rule in watercolour painting is that there are no rules. As far as I'm concerned, I'm happy to paint in any sort of way that I want. Um, I just want to enjoy my painting process and really have fun um, and be inspired by creating all kinds of interesting and wonderful effects. And I think on your painting journey, you may hear that there are some certain rules that you must obey. In other words, um, I think the one that I hear the most is, is that you should leave the white unpainted paper for your lights and not use white gouache or white watercolour paint. Well, I mean, that's a choice. It's not a rule. If you choose to paint like that, that's your choice. But you don't have to. If you want to use white paint, then feel free. It's a lovely addition. The old masters used white paint. Um, Constable and Turner, one of the most amazing landscape painters that ever lived, used plenty of body paint, as it's called. The reason it's called body paint is it contains some chalk, and this chalk makes it opaque and gives it enough body to be able to cover over even um, and look effective even over dark colours. Um, and often beginners find the idea of leaving or preserving all the white paper very intimidating because it's extremely difficult to do until you've um, really mastered a lot of your techniques, um, basic techniques and things like that. Um, preserving the white of the paper is just something that becomes a huge problem. So don't worry if you can't preserve all your whites. Use some white gouache at the end. It's really, really useful and incredibly effective and absolutely fine to use. In other instances, you're sometimes told that um, the rule in watercolour painting is to paint from light to dark. Um, or to um, never use a wet watery wash on a damp painting otherwise you'll get blooms and cauliflowers. I mean again these are all choices that you can make about how you want your painting to look. Um, There's an amazing artist um, Antonio Ortega Perez who I really admire hugely and he will deliberately create the conditions to um, make blooms and cauliflowers and runbacks and turn them into an integral and vital part of his painting. Um, So again, these aren't rules, but they are, it's advice and choices. I mean, the advice is good. Don't paint with a watery wash into a damp painting, otherwise you'll get cauliflowers or runbacks. Now that's true if you're painting a classic uh, landscape, you need to be aware of that. But it's not a rule, it's um, it's a technique that you need to learn. Um, I think if there's anything close to a rule, apart from the number one rule, which is there are no rules, then I would say the other most important rule is to really enjoy what you're doing. Um, to use it as some form of sort of a pleasurable hobby that you can really enjoy and not get too bogged down by. I think a lot of people are very intimidated by watercolour because to start with, there's so much to think about when you start to paint. But the most important thing is to realise that 
The old saying, Rome wasn't built in a day, is so true with watercolour painting. So just relax and experiment a lot and enjoy the process. Now here in this breaking wave painting, I haven't really been painting at all. I've been splashing the paint on, um, spattering it, using a mister spray, um, tipping and tilting my board, dabbing out with a tissue. I just used the brush to start with and, and at a few places just to put in the sky and the initial sweep of abstract paint. Um, but there really is very, very little actual painting here, but it's still a painting. The fact that I've used like abstract techniques and special effects doesn't make it any less of a painting. So feel free to experiment. I mean, you can use plastic cards to apply your paint. You can use salt. Um, you can use cling film or glad wrap and stretch that across the wet paint and it'll create some lovely effects. You can print on it with things like pressing leaves into wet paint. Uh, the possibilities with any kind of painting and especially water pa watercolour painting are absolutely endless. So especially for beginners, try not to be too limited or imagining that there are certain set ways that you have to paint. The best way to learn is to paint in many, many different ways and then you will gradually find out which ways, which methods and which styles you like to paint in. And by style, I mean genre like loose painting or detailed, um, abstract, semi-abstract, that sort of thing. Now I'm using my white gouache. Now I'm not shy with this. I'm dropping lots of it in, flicking it in with my brush, tapping the brush, and you can see those beautiful blooms, which is what they are, these blooms and drops are diffusing into the damp paint. They will get lighter, gouache does dry lighter, so I'll probably have to put more in, but it's really bringing out the sea spray effect. And it's making some wonderful, almost sort of marbled patterns in the wet paint. Now, going back to what I said earlier about another rule being in watercolour paint, you always paint from light to dark. Now, yes, that's not a rule, but it is a way of painting and it's a very useful thing to understand and realise. So this is a technique rather than a rule. Um, it, it, it means because of the transparent nature of watercolour, if you start with your lightest washes, and then slowly build up your darker washes and glazes and detail on top of that, getting darker and darker until your darkest accents are placed as a finishing touch, then you will maintain the beautiful transparency and light that you can get in a watercolour painting, um, rather than it looking sort of a bit dead or a bit muddy. So that in itself is a method and not a rule. Um, and it can, of course, you can, you can paint the other way. You can consciously apply your darkest darks and then work around them with your lights if you choose to do so. Um, the possibilities, of, as I've said before, are absolutely endless. And the way that you can find out the, you know, how you want to paint is by painting and by trying out all sorts of new ideas, you'll know as soon as you discover the type of painting that you want to do, because all of a sudden you'll get really excited. You won't mind about making mistakes. You won't feel self-conscious. You'll just thoroughly enjoy the process. So I've left my abstract patterns and, and, and paint and splashes and and drops and spatter. I've left it to dry. It's dried beautifully, um, a lot lighter and softer, which is how watercolour always dries. So now I'm just going to add a few touches and I'm going to soften this hard edge here. That was just a little bit too hard for a breaking wave. So um, I've wet that with clean water and I'm using a cut off bristle brush to gently scrub that surface and then I'll dab it with a tissue 
uh, just to soften that area. And now I'm going to use my Matthew Palmer um, foliage brush, um, which a friend gave me a while ago. It's a very useful brush, although I don't often use it, but I will be using it here to stipple on white gouache um, here and there onto the wave to give me some stronger, um, stronger white marks where the white gouache has softened back into the wet and wet background. Now here it's very easy to get carried away and to add too much, but then you can soften it back down eventually, um, just using a little bit of water on a damp brush and soften down any areas where you think it's just got a little bit too harsh. But I think painting something as abstract and as beautiful as a wave is a really good way to experiment and sort of, especially if you've been feeling a little bit constrained by um, some of the techniques or the um, supposed rules of watercolour painting, then it's really nice to sort of just let go and splash out and just produce something that's you've really enjoyed painting that's full of life and very expressive. It could be a very satisfying thing to do. And then you can look at all the effects that you've achieved and some things you might really, really like. So you can sort of remember how that happened, whether or not it was the look of the white gouache on the damp paper as it sort of spread out or the misty effect that you got by dabbing out some sea spray with a tissue. Um, and then adding darks here and there and watching how they run with the, with the water spray. Uh, make little notes in your sketchbook so that you remember these techniques for future paintings. So now I'm just putting the final touches to this sea and softening back with a damp small squirrel mop some of those white gouache marks just to blend them in with the rest a little bit and so that I get this nice, soft, misty white look in some areas of the painting. And finally, I'm going to use my small Chinese calligraphy brush and Payne's Grey, and I'm going to put in a few seagulls wheeling over this breaking wave. Um, I think I'll do three, a large, a medium, and a small, and then I'll put a little bit of white gouache across the wings of the largest one. Well, I hope um, today's video has been useful um, and I hope it's, it's helped some people, especially beginners, to, to realise that, um, that the, the world is your oyster, really, with watercolour painting. And you don't have to just stick with watercolour and gouache. You can use pen and ink, white gel pens, um, there's all kinds of other media that you can use. You can go on in to the painting at the end with, with pastels, with um, watercolour pencils or ordinary coloured pencils, um, solid, you know, water-soluble graphite. There are so many different ways that you can be creative with watercolour and it, it's not just restricted to any kind of rule. Remember, the most important rule in watercolour painting is that there are no rules. Painting is art, it's fun, it's expressive, it's creative. Um, so don't feel constrained by, by anything. Just let yourself go and enjoy yourself. So let's take off the tape and have a look at the painting with its clean white border. Um, and I'm really pleased with that. It is very loose, it's very, very abstract. Um, there's not a lot of definition there except in the birds, which is minimal. Um, but I'm extremely pleased with it. I really enjoy the process. There's something very exciting about not quite knowing uh, what the wet in wet techniques are going to do, what sort of marks they're gonna give you. Um, and there's no wrong or right way to do this. It's just enjoying yourself. After all, it's only a piece of paper, isn't it? 
If we look closely, I really like seeing those sort of billowy effects of the white gouache mixed in with the Prussian blue and the Payne's grey. Um, some of the spatter has stayed fairly hard, some of it has stayed soft. I've got some soft edges, hard edges, and that lovely pale sky, um, which really shows off all the sea spray. Thanks so much for watching and listening to me ramble on. I hope it wasn't, um, <laughs> I hope it wasn't too much. Um, please uh, give us a thumbs up and um, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. I'll see you again soon and happy painting and happy experimenting. And remember, the only rule in watercolour painting is there are no rules. See you soon then. Bye.